the reason I'm saying that I believe that the uh, that the church, the Vatican, came up with the idea of Judaism. I think it, it came up with this idea and promoted it. Why? Simple. The Vatican is now presenting itself to the world to be the solid focal point of world Christianity representing the Almighty God on the earth. But in order to do that over the centuries, going back into the uh, really history of Europe, going back into the you know, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth century of Europe, they needed, the church required and needed to have a legitimate foundation. If you're going to build something, you've got to have a good foundation. You build on concrete. You build on something that's sturdy. You don't build on sand. And so the church was building on sand. It has no official connection to God at all. It has no official connection to anything at all. It's just an ancient cult worshiping Dagon, the fish god, and the Phoenician Canaanite god of Anis. And so this whole ancient uh, uh, mess that we refer to as the Vatican and the Catholic Church today around the world, it needed a legitimate, de jure, and real foundations on which to base the church's existence today. So, if the church were to come into existence and just out of the out of the ordinary, just popped in one day and said, "We represent the Almighty God," and that's the way it is for the whole world. Well, there's too many people would would immediately reject that. You just you just popped into town. Overnight, and now you're going to be the the one who actually represents the Almighty God. On what do you base <clears throat> that incredible assumption that you were, represent God? So they have to. The church had to come. Uh, they had to come with a with a story based on an ancient civilization that was ancient, uh, you know, thousands of years ago. And so it's not just the Catholic churches today is the ultimate authority on the earth representing God. No, no, they, they base their position on the ancient world. And going back into the ancient world of the ancient Hebrews and the ancient God of the Hebrews and, 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 and all of the holiness of ancient Israel and all of that stuff, which is all, all, which is nothing more than creating a story. Just like you could create a story about your family and talk about all the wonderful things they did and how they set up governments and they were this and they were that. And that's why you should be considered today, you know, to be so holy and righteous because of your family. Then we come to find out, no, your family was just like everybody else's family. They didn't do any of the stuff you said. But if you can, you know, if you can control the news media, and radio and television and the printed page during the Middle Ages, you could propagandize the whole world into believing that the Catholic Church sits on the ancient foundations of the Jewish revelation, the Jewish people, God's chosen people, and the holiness of Israel and all of that nonsense is nothing but propaganda that never existed. And today, like I said, there are there are paleontologists, archaeologists, and scientists, and teachers all over Israel itself are writing books about how there never was an ancient Israel. The whole thing was a was a story. There was no King David. There was no King Solomon. There was no temple. There was none of it. It's all just a story to give the Catholic Church and the Christianity uh, a. a, a a solid foundation upon which to say we are the, the, the we are the carriers of the great legacy of the ancient Hebrews and the ancient God of the Jews. They were God's chosen people, and today we are the Christian fulfillment of all of that today. When actually, no, the entire superstructure of Western civilization is a religio, political, financial, a military empire that has no basis with God or anything decent or anything holy. It's just basically sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It's a military-industrial complex. And then when you begin to see how, the you know, when watching movies like Godfather and got the third one in the series, Godfather 3, 
where the mafia is actually in the Vatican, dealing directly with the so-called Holy Father. And then you begin to see the connections with the Lucosa Nostra and the, all the secret societies and criminal societies in the world coming out of Rome, coming out of Italy. And then you begin to in, get into the dark secret societies of Italian Freemasonry. It is one hell of a dark, evil story. And then the first two world wars in Europe... And so something is going on here and it hasn't got anything to do with Jesus or anything holy. This is a, this is a well laid plan for thousands of years to fool the entire world into believing that the church today is a Catholic church is sitting on the records and all the ancient wonderful history of the Jewish people. When in point of fact, there was no ancient Jewish people. The whole thing is a story. And that's why it's falling apart today, because that's the way things work. Eventually, it's all going to fall apart, and the Vatican will have to change with the times. And that's another thing we could talk about, the different symbols in the Catholic Church. Where do they come from? And uh, and the words and the terms and the history all of this is, is shadowed in darkness, and we're not being told any of this. So as far as I'm concerned, the Vatican represents the worship of an ancient pagan deity from Phoenicia, Canaanite uh, deity, and it's, and it's just an incredible story of betrayal and lies and deception. All you got to do is have an honor. You know, you gotta, you got to not only be able to look like the Bible has Jesus saying, you know, you look with your eyes, but you don't see. You listen with your ears, but you don't hear. And with your heart, you don't get the sense of it. And that's exactly right. The people of this world, they look with their eyes, but they don't see what the Vatican really is, what the Catholic Church really is. They don't see the history. They don't see it. Why? Because they don't want to see it. They're not interested to see it. And so they're making a lot of money uh, you know, being a part of the establishment. So everybody just goes along to get along. I've seen that all my life, people going along to get along with their organizations. Uh, why? Because it's their money. Their, 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 their livelihood depends on what they don't see. So they purposely don't see it. For me, I don't care. I do see it. And I would like to talk about it. I'd like for people to understand the Vatican does not represent Jesus. Jesus is Iusus in Greek, and it goes back to sun worship. All of this so-called Judaism, Christianity, and Islam can be traced back to the worship of the sun. And, of course, there's a, there, mixed in over the period of centuries was uh, the worship of the moon god, Sin, or Sinai. Uh, the worship of the planet Saturn is very big in the Middle East and in the world today, all over the world. The Germans are big on the on the brotherhood of Saturn. And, and in Germany, there were Jewish organizations that were promoting the worship of the planet Saturn. Saturn was called El. This is why he today, you know, boy, when you get into Saturn worship, and connecting it with the ancient Jewish worship, you begin to see the connections between Germany and the Jewish religion and the German people. And uh, and this is why the, the Jews today are still worshiping the old sun god, but by a different name today. And that sun god has now become, as, as life would have it, it's now evolved into moon worship. Because Allah of the uh, Islamic world, Allah was originally a sun god. And he is still pictured in, in pictures coming out of the Islamic world today. Shows the Arabs all lined up worshiping with their hands in the air the rising sun. And so, but Allah now today is understood by the academics of the world, people who study the religion of Islam know that Allah is the same moon god, going all the way back to the moon worshippers. And that brings in the, you know, the, the moon worshippers we call the, uh, you know, the, the Jewish people. There were no Jewish people. There were Phoenician Canaanites. They worshipped the moon. 
and 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 the moon god today is Allah. Allah is a moon god, but Allah and Yahweh, Yahweh for the Hebrews and Allah for the Arabic, were both sun gods originally, and that's why you, you uh, and that's why today the 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 foundation of Judaism and Christianity and Islam, but especially Judaism and Christianity, is the sun worship of the ancient sun god in uh, in, in Egypt. And this is why the ancient Egyptians said you can't see God. Nobody can see God. But you can see his offspring, his son, S-U-N. 